Welcome to Wired In. I'm Diana Galata with Hampton City Schools. I'm very pleased today to be joined by someone that I consider a friend, Lieutenant Price, who is the commander of the Community Engagement Unit for Hampton Police Department. Welcome. Welcome and thank you for having me. You are welcome. I'm glad you're here again. <laughs> um, first off, I, before we talk a little bit about the great relationship that the, that the school division and the police department have, I want to learn a little bit about you. A little birdie told me oh, that, <laughs> that you were a band drum major. I was, in wow. In I was, yes. So did you grow up in Pocosin? I did. I, I, I was born in Illinois. We moved oh, that's uh, right. to this area when I was three. Um, lived in Newport News until I was about 10 and we moved to Pocosin. And I played the flute in high school band. And then I, in my sophomore year, I was one of the junior drum majors. And then my junior and senior year, I was one of the senior drum majors. So we have a little bit in common because I played the flute. Oh, wow. In the marching band. Fun. In Texas. And then you lived in Alton, right? Alton, yeah, that's where I was born. Very which good. Which is where uh, my son played hockey before I moved here. So we oh, have that crazy. connection. Yes, already. absolutely. So what made you want to go into law enforcement? It's cliche. I get asked that all the time. But really, um, I grew up watching Chips. And Me too. everybody will know what that is now that we just had the new movie uh -huh. come out. Uh -huh. um, loved it. I always wanted to be a police officer. And when I got into high school, I wanted, I knew I wanted to do something in public safety and I knew I wanted to do um, something to help people. I just really wasn't sure what it was. And I took the New Horizons law enforcement program my senior year and absolutely fell in love with it. And um, I went straight from there into Thomas Nelson and the two plus two program. Mm -hmm. And I became a police cadet at the same time. And so I worked full time as a police cadet and then, you know, going to Thomas Nelson and um, that's kind of how it got started. So you've been a police officer for Hampton for how long? Uh, it, I just 19 years. It'll be 20 years um, in March of next year. Wow. And kind of a, a fun story is, and I don't know how much time we have, but a fun story is I actually, because I was in New Horizons, um, Pocosin Police Department actually hired me as auxiliary at 18. Wow. And so I volunteered my own time in the summer of 1996 way back, um, and volunteered and went to the police academy on my own so that I was an 18-year-old police officer, certified police officer, which is unheard of in, in these days and time. So I've actually been doing law enforcement since June of 1996, which makes me sound old. No, no, not so much. But you've had different jobs, though, within the police department, so mm -hmm. I'm sure that that helps keep things interesting. Absolutely. I say you never know what you're going to get into when you come to work. Um, you know, as you move up in rank, it changes a little bit. I, police work is kind of in the foreground now, and now I'm more administrative. I do more supervising, managing, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, when you're a patrolman, you can. There's a vast, you know, number of jobs that you can do, from being a detective mm -hmm. to being in operations to being on in the boat unit and working on boats. It's it's a really fun career. So let's talk about the relationship between Hampton City Schools and Hampton Police Department. I was, and I've told you this before, um, I've worked in two other school divisions and have never seen the kind of cooperation. In fact, when I got here almost four years ago, you were one of the first phone calls that was made to me in terms of, hello, let's get together, let's, sure. let's collaborate. Why do you think that that collaboration between the police department and the schools is important? Well, we're, we're a team. I mean, first of all, we're, we're committed to raising our, our kids to grow up and be responsible and, you know, um, pr kids that are going to grow up and, you know, and do great things here in the city of Hampton. And so, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm proud of is, you know, some SROs in some jurisdictions throughout the country, they focus on criminal justice and they focus on the police side, policing side and enforcement side of law enforcement. And in Hampton, we're, we, yes, we have to do some of that because that's our job, but we're also focused on how do we help those kids that haven't gone completely on the wrong side of the law, but they're kind of on that fence. How do we work with the schools to say, is this something that 
administratively the schools can deal with rather than charging criminal. And you know, I'm honored, I get to work with the school board. I, I'm always amazed at how many school board members come out to scenes at schools and they're involved, they wanna know what's happened, they wanna know, you know what the school system can do, how can we work together for the kid. And um, I, I'm always really honored to sit down and have those conversations. And a lot of times it's, you know, maybe a long-term suspension is more appropriate than being arrested. Um, and, and because once you get a criminal history, you start that process. And so if we've got a kid that's really a good kid, and we've had several instances this year where kids make mistakes, and rather than you know, arrest them and charge them and go through that process, we've been able to work with the school system and maybe get them some counseling through your counselors and that sort of thing. Um, and so I'm, I'm honored to be a part of that, and it, that, that really goes all the way up to the chief. He supports us, the assistant chief supports us, and they understand rehabilitative versus enforcement efforts, and I, I am, I'm really honored to be a part of that. Well, we appreciate that because, as you know, public education, that's what we're all about, is building great kids. Yes. And preparing them for their future. And you're right, once you do establish that criminal record and head down that path, it's hard to get off of that path. It is. So you mentioned school resource officers, and in your position, you are in charge of the school resource officers. Yes, ma'am. So talk about how that looks in Hampton City Schools. You've talked a little bit about rehabilitative sure. um, efforts, which is great, but what else do SROs do? in our schools? You know, one of the, one of the programs that I love, and, and we, we do so much, but one of the programs that I love, and, we, and I guess I should say this, we have four SROs, one in each high school, mm -hmm. and then we have SROs in each middle school. We also have a truancy officer that works with those kids that don't necessarily want to come to school. Um, but one of the programs that, that they do, and it's age appropriate, so we can teach the classes from kindergarten all the way to senior and high school, is Virginia Rules. And our SROs just are doing a phenomenal job of picking classes that match the curriculum that's being taught, but yet it mats, matches the Attorney General's guidelines for what is a Virginia rule class. And we, we're teaching those, I, I mean, my, my officer friendly, Officer Moffitt, is just killing it. I mean, she's doing 40 or 50 classes a month. I don't know how she gets it done, but she does. And she goes to all the elementary school and teaches those. But we've even branched out our SROs, when we're, so when we're on spring break or Christmas break or summer break, um, we're starting to teach Virginia rules with parks and recreation at their break camps. So, you know, at spring break camp, we went and taught Virginia rules. And this, this summer at summer camp, where they're gonna have 11 weeks of summer camp, we're, we're actually part of their schedule throughout the entire uh, program. And that's just how much they love teaching the program. And my SROs, you know, we hand pick those. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they do just such a great job. They love kids. Um, and they want to do the, the right thing by these kids. And so teaching them, working with them, building those partnerships and relationships is really key for an SRO. So another great relationship that has been established that I think will benefit the police department and the school system and our students is the Law and Public Safety yes. Academy. Um, tell us about your, your involvement in that, as a you personally and then as the police department. How have you all been involved in helping develop that program, which will begin next year at Bethel High School? Yeah, the Law and Public Safety Academy. You know, we went to the official designation by Ford Next Generation Learning last week, and I was, I was looking around and I talked to Assistant Chief Brighton who was sitting next to me at the table and we looked at each other and we were very humbled to have been a part of developing the Law and Public Safety Program. Uh, we've been in it from literally the first you know, meeting where we all sat down at the convention center and said, this is what Ford Next Generation Learning is, this is what it looks like and here's all the work we have to do. And then for the last year, myself, Assistant Chief Brighton, Assistant Chief Gallup, um, have really been working collaboratively with a number of different folks from the staff at Hampton City Schools to develop a meaningful law enforcement public safety academy um, that's really going to change the way we, we teach here in the city of Hampton. Um, but there's going to be a communications aspect, mm -hmm. uh, which is fantastic because we're going to be certifying uh, kids in different Department of Criminal Justice Services classes mm -hmm. so that when they graduate, they can actually go right into being a dispatcher. And you know, they start out making about $35,000 a year. So can you imagine a full benefit retirement package, everything at 18? Right out of high school. Right out of high school. That's great. It's phenomenal, it, it really is. And the, the fire and law uh, classes too are, are gonna be great. Um, I, I, I talk about people all the time about New Horizons and how wonderful that was, what a foundation it gave me. Um, you know, it didn't certify me to do anything, but it did sure, sure as heck help me understand, 
you know, what police work was. Is this something I wanted to do? And I really think the Law and Public Safety Academy is going to do it for our students as well. Well, and what New Horizons also did for you is it kept you here. Yes. In this area. And we really want to see our students come back and raise their families here in yes. Hampton. And so this not only it, prepare, it prepares our students, it provides you all with great candidates, sure. uh, great workforce, and then helps people come back to our community and help build the community. Before we close, I wanted to just ask you one thing. Um, I know that police departments around the country get a bad rap. Um, it's not an easy job. It's a very difficult job. And um, people are, th they, you know, they worry about crime and so on. So as a, just as a, as a viewer who's watching this show, who's concerned about crime anywhere, it's just, it's not just in Hampton, but anywhere. Sure. What can people generally do to help support the police department in um, making our community safer? Get involved. I mean, that's the, that's the quick and easy answer is get involved and stay involved. We have a program called Look, Listen, Call. And basically all that is, is be aware of your surroundings. Pay attention. If you see something suspicious, something that doesn't feel right, call us. You can call Crime Line, which is anonymous, or you can call our non-emergency number, or you can even dial 911, but call us. We can't help you if we don't know you need help. Um, we can't investigate something if we don't know something needs to be investigated. But get involved. Join your neighborhood watch group. Um, you can call our community relations unit at the police department, and we can tell you when your next neighborhood watch meeting is, um, and, and get involved. Know your community. Uh, community policing is just that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it started with neighbors, who some went to work, some didn't, and they started watching out for each other. Um, and that's really what we need our citizens to do. Hampton's a beautiful place. We have beautiful people. 99.9% .9 of the people in Hampton are wonderful people. It's that little tiny percentage that sometimes gives a bad rap. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, I've, I've, Hampton has been my life for 19 years. Mm -hmm. I love the city of Hampton. And I think everything that we're doing collaboratively from the city, from the school system, from the police department, is really gonna change Hampton, I really do. Hampton's a wonderful place to live, work, and play. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just, I, I've used humbled and honored, but you know, when you've made a career and a life out of a place and it's, it's been as good to you as, as it's been to you, if, if that makes sense, um, you just, you love something. And um, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of Hampton. And I, I just, I can't wait for the academies to start next year. Me too, I'm very excited. Me too, I really am. Well, thanks for coming on today and sharing with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. And I want to know the birdie that uh, talked about high school. I think I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for watching Wired In. Have a great week.